Good morning, I'm Andy Rome, marketing professor at Loyola Marymount University and co-director of M School of LMU's M School program, a specialized program focusing on creative marketing, branding, and advertising. Today I'm with Tim Murphy, Chief Operating Officer at In Ocean Worldwide, an all-around amazing person to talk about today's international business challenges and opportunities. So Tim, thank you for um, for uh, taking the time this morning to talk with us. Um, thank you for, for being part of LMU's Center for International Business Education video series on global issues sponsored by our College of Business Administration Center for International Business Education. And congratulations on InOcean Worldwide America being recently named the Automotive Agency of the Year. Well, that's awesome. Well, thank you, Andy, and thanks for having me. And um, we also just got another industry on there uh, over the past couple of days where our executive creative director, Barney Goldberg, was just named to the Creative 100 list. And uh, coincidentally, uh, other award winners included John Krasinski and John Legend and mm. Lucy Teigen, who we worked with on our recent Super Bowl commercials. So we're really proud of uh, Barney being recognized with uh, people like that. And I spent a lot of quality time with John Krasinski on his Some Good News Network uh, this, during quarantine. So you're in, you're in great company with them. Yeah. Um, so Tim, I just wanted to um, first see if we could talk briefly about InOcean and the work you do for your primary clients such as Hyundai and Kia. Sure. Sure. So. Uh, um, the agency uh, started about 11 years ago with Hyundai and Kia, and it's now expanded. We actually have a third automotive client called uh, Genesis, which is an offshoot of Hyundai. It's their uh, newly formed uh, luxury division that we help them uh, get underway. And uh, we now have uh, an awful lot of experience beyond the automotive. Uh, recently, we've added in different areas, we've added uh, QSR restaurants and healthcare, uh, academics and higher education, mm -hmm. insurance, and some other areas. Um, so InOcean in the US is a division of InOcean Worldwide, which is based in Korea. And uh, we've got about 430 employees, I think in the US, primarily in Huntington Beach and Irvine. And then we have satellite offices around the country. And uh, we're, uh, Truly a, a full service ad agency that uh, has creative, of course, but we also uh, get into uh, media strategy and buying and production and uh, overall account planning and strategy. Uh, okay. We've got one more area that's uh, really, well, two more areas, I guess. Uh, our data science group, which is uh, really cool, that uh, uh, helps our clients with their marketing and business objectives. And then, uh, we do things from a, uh, oh, I guess from a uh, 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 corporate uh, responsibility area where uh, we, we tie in and uh, connect our clients with uh, things that are socially responsible too. So yeah, a whole bunch of things that we do. Tim, in, in addition to Hyundai, uh, Kia and Genesis, do your other clients have global exposure? We do have some. Uh, some are very local, like Wiener Schnitzel, which is a kind of a primarily a California restaurant mm -hmm. group. Uh, and then uh, we work with um, LG, mm -hmm. uh, a couple of divisions of LG, including uh, SKS, their signature kitchen series for uh, high-end appliances and uh, uh, you know in the kitchen and mm -hmm. as well as in the home, uh, things like that. So yeah, so we do have other clients like that. To say the least, we're living in chaotic times these days. Global pandemic, global business markets are in an economic sinkhole, and the recent weeks have highlighted deep issues of social and racial injustice in the United States. To what degree has your business with your overseas clients shifted or changed as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and or the economic situation? 
Well, uh, probably like everyone, we've shifted quite a bit, but uh, with our parent company being based in Korea, I think we're kind of a little bit ahead of the curve in terms mm -hmm. of preparedness. And um, our Korean offices went through the quarantine ahead uh, of the U.S., and we were able to learn a lot from them. Mm -hmm. And uh, they did a really nice job as, as a country overall and then our company. Um, now, certainly we've had campaigns that have been postponed or altered mm -hmm. Uh, to responsibly reflect our times, I guess. But um, we're, we're working closely with our clients on, mm -hmm. on, on their plans and what to do and, and how to relaunch. And uh, for example, with Hyundai, we, uh, we uh, launched or relaunched the uh, Hyundai Assurance Program mm -hmm. uh, to help out customers that are having a tough time right now. And uh, they had some, uh, some payments that were forgiven as well as some payments that were deferred to help them along. Uh, and I think that was a good, uh, a good thing to do. So in the, in the creative work you're, you're doing for clients such as Hyundai and Kia, do you see a difference in the type of work that you're putting together for them given, given the current situation? Oh, sure. Sure. And uh, even with the Hyundai assurance program, for example, it's, uh, uh, you know, there, there, there are a lot of things that uh, have been set out there that, you know, it sounds very trite right now, like we're mm -hmm. in this together and we'll get through this together and things like that. But honestly, when, when COVID started, it was an awfully big issue and continues to be. So um, we, we had to, uh, let's say, get away from sales events, you know, mm -hmm. hurry in now, it's the best time to buy a car uh, versus, you know what, if, if, uh, if you'd like to buy a car, um, We'll, we'll give you these special incentives that I mentioned a moment ago. Plus, um, uh, you can do it outside the dealership, you know, mm -hmm. so you can do uh, in some states, the entire transaction outside of the dealership and online. And in other states, you can do everything except uh, kind of the final signature. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so we've had to uh, uh, completely revise things uh, that we're saying on behalf of our clients. So in, in some sense, you, you've needed the, to balance the need to be sensitive to our current you know, economic situation with layoffs and furloughs and cost cutting, but also balanced with the need to keep the assembly lines moving in either the United States or in the home country back in South Korea. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we still have a responsibility for our clients. And uh, as you said, the assembly lines are, are keep moving. And if they don't move, then more people are out of work, whether it's uh, overseas or right here in the U.S. where both Hyundai and Kia have assembly plants. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it, I, I think it's worked out really well. We work awfully closely with our clients. And um, uh, for example, last month in May, uh, Hyundai outsold Nissan, which is a really big deal. And even though the entire auto, automotive industry has been down along with the economy, um, Hyundai picked up an entire, uh, a full point of market share, which is a really big deal. So uh, I think what we're doing is paying off and what our clients are doing too, mm -hmm. especially. Do you see that as a function of the product or maybe price point? differences it's all about the creative the wonderful and yeah the amazing creative that uh it, it, it involves a lot of things mm -hmm. um uh in fact one one thing that um we're able to listen in and participate in are um what hyundai corporate it, uh how they're working with their uh, dealers mm -hmm. who are really hyundai's customers mm -hmm. dealers buy the cars from hyundai and they've been able to do uh, certain things to allow them to uh, make sure that um, they would stay on their feet financially because a lot of our markets, California being one, New York really got affected, Pennsylvania, um, dealerships were just shut down for some length of time. And uh, Hyundai worked very closely with them to uh, make sure that uh, they could get through that time period. And when they started to open up again, uh, they opened up, uh, in a proper manner and uh, they had the right inventory, let's say. Uh, so when customers were ready to buy cars, Hyundai actually had the right mix of products. Mm -hmm. So given that we're all in work from home mode and our travel is either prohibited or significantly limited, 
how have you managed your relationships with headquarters in South Korea? Well, um, whether it's in Korea or just in the United States, right mm -hmm. down the street, um, it's uh, Zoom calls like this, Microsoft Teams, WebEx, FaceTime, you name it. And uh, even occasionally an old fashioned phone call or email. <laughs> uh, but it, it's worked out surprisingly well. Um, mm -hmm. We've had, uh, I, I, I mean, I, I'm on calls like this all day long from sun up to sundown. And, and I think our clients are in a good portion, if not all of our um, in ocean uh, team members are too. And we're probably working, we're working certainly at least as hard and most people are working harder right now uh, from home and uh, the, just on the work portion. And then when it gets complicated with uh, family matters, with, um, you know, employees who have little kids at home and they have to homeschool them or daycare, take care of daycare for them, it makes it very difficult. But uh, I'm really proud of um, in ocean for being able to get through this and uh, do a good job through it. So it's, uh, it, it, it's been difficult like it has been for everyone, but uh, we get through it and we try to keep the communication going. In fact, one thing, Andy, that, uh, that I'm really proud of every other Thursday, we do a virtual town hall with in ocean and mm -hmm. uh, our clients are doing the same thing. But with ours, we have, uh, you know, we celebrate certain things like new employees coming on board. We've had to onboard employees who have never met anyone else at the agency over the last couple of months. And they're working from home and, and uh, uh, making the best of it. And then uh, we have guest speakers too. So uh, about a week ago, we had a guest speaker come in, a professor from uh, USC who spoke about how to deal with emotions during these troubling times. And this Thursday, we have two great, great guest speakers who are going to talk about Black Lives Matters and uh, their personal experiences and, um, you know, what we can do to, uh, you know, be better people, better employees, a better agency, better community members, things like that. Are the, are your virtual town halls um, global in nature or are they for in ocean worldwide America? You know, we haven't done them globally yet, but it's uh, been for in ocean in the U.S., which, um, you know, we'll get anywhere from 350 or more of our employees to participate, which, uh, which is a pretty good number. And, and we keep it specific for, for our needs uh, uh, that we have here. And you were um, mentioning about getting through this. If you think about your your needs for short-term and long-term planning and given the number of unknown unknowns. In other words, we really, it's really impossible to predict the future, even maybe yeah. three to four months out. Yeah. How do you manage that process with your major, um, you know, your major clients? Um, well, I, I would say a good portion of it because there are so many unknowns. It, it's, it's impossible to predict the future. Who would have thought of this in January or February? Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, but now we've, uh, we're going down paths and we've got plan A and plan B and plan C really. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's a matter of if business picks up at this time, here's what we're going to do. If business, mm -hmm. you know, is stagnant or goes down, here's what we're going to do. Cause, um, you know, with our company, as well as with our employees, you've, you know, you, you want to keep the doors open and you've got to be smart about your resources and, and how do you, you know, your cash flow and things like that. So mm -hmm. we've been very fortunate to get through this with um, uh, not affecting our employees for the most part. Unfortunately, we have some things that our clients have had to give up like experiential events. So we, we have groups like Kia, for example, is very, very involved in the NBA and LPGA with a lot of experiential events going on at the games, at the arenas and things like that. And that's all been put on hold. So we're working with um, those leagues and other leagues uh, to be able to uh, get them up and running again. And uh, with Hyundai, it's the same thing. And Genesis also. Yeah. At a broader level, yeah. what do you think U.S. companies can or should do to improve their global competitiveness? And, you know, we, you can account for 
the pandemic and, and how you see the future playing out? Like how can U.S. companies better uh, prepare themselves for, uh, for future competitiveness? Um, well, I think we have a little bit of an advantage because um, our company is based in Korea and we do have mm -hmm. a couple of Korean uh, based companies, LG, mm -hmm. Hyundai, Kia, and so on, uh, which is kind of nice. But um, one thing we do, which I'm looking forward to, is um, we send a contingent of U.S. employees over to Seoul. Uh, every year for a week to really get immersed into their culture and uh, get to meet our counterparts that work at InOcean in Korea. We get to meet our uh, Korean clients in person and really just spend time with them. And it's really, really important to do that. Um, you know, if we sit back and say, hey, we're the United States and we're the greatest con company in the world and no one can touch us, you're, you're going to fall behind. You know, that, that is a really, really old thinking and uh, you need to be able to kind of embrace diversity of our world and, um, and, and you don't have a choice if you want to survive. I mean, the internet has made everything much more intimate, much smaller, and mm -hmm. uh, you've, you, you better embrace it or you're going to be left behind, I think. So. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, finally, do you have any advice for students interested in the creative marketing or advertising industries regarding, you know, what you see as critical global competencies that they should develop that can help them better prepare for, uh, for their future careers? Yeah. And, um, I, I wish I was a, a young student right now because some of the things that um, they're able to take advantage of are fantastic. Um, study abroad programs. If, if a student is fortunate enough to be able to do that, I, I, I would do that wholeheartedly. In fact, uh, I have two daughters, both of them studied abroad and they grew exponentially that, uh, you know, something that they, just couldn't have done if they stayed one extra semester back here in, in California where they went to school. Um, because you get to experience the culture of your, your host country, but mm -hmm. also virtually every weekend they're going to another country, you know, if, if, if they're in Europe, for example, like my kids were. So I think that's great, but be able to go out and spend as much time possible abroad, whether it's then or after you graduate or summers, you know, go to places like uh, India and Germany and China and, Korea for sure, uh, and experience their cultures. And uh, uh, whether you can do that or not, you can still read and you can watch uh, videos and just learn an awful lot uh, about what's beyond the walls of wherever you live here in the States. Mm -hmm. So even beyond the business climate to learn about uh, unique country cultures, ways of life. Absolutely. Consumer, be, you know, behavior of individuals and customers within those within those countries absolutely and i i saw it early in my career when uh, uh, i was working uh, with u.s clients who did not believe at all that um, a japanese company could come in with a luxury car as an example mm -hmm. and uh and take over market share from U.S. luxury automobile companies. And they just had their heads in the sand and uh, mm -hmm. they were left in the dust. Um, mm -hmm. So I think if in that case, if they would have gone over and learned and understood about the Japanese culture in that case, uh, they would have understood that, okay, we have a lot to learn from them. And I think mm -hmm. all of us have a lot to learn from everyone around the world. Mm -hmm. Well, that wraps up this episode of the LMU Center for International Business Education's video series on global issues. Tim Murphy, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to meet with us this morning. Thank you, Tim. Thanks, Andy, for having me. Appreciate okay. it. All right. Take care. Take care. Thank you. Bye.